we're here in Stockholm with Marcus Persson. You sold your company recently mm -hmm. um, to Microsoft, but you haven't really been talking about it. Um, so what happened there? I wasn't working on Minecraft anymore, and I hadn't for a long time, but I still was kind of responsible for it since I made it. I was the main shareholder of Mojang. And then uh, this big thing happened with the ULA incident where people thought that we changed the rules and like did the, the, the end user worse. license agreement. Yeah, right. which had always been in place. But what actually happened was that some people brought it up like, so we're not allowed to do this and that. Right. And we said no. So we looked it over and actually made the, the rules more lenient. Right. But people still get very upset with like me personally, even though I wasn't even working on it anymore. And I just figured like, I don't know if I want to put up with this anymore. And then I saw the This is Phil Fish video, which is a YouTube documentary about a guy called Phil Fish. And he talks about uh, how like internet personalities and like famous people, people aren't really, they're not talking to that actual person when they talk to a person, they're mm -hmm. talking about the idea of that person. And mm -hmm. How does it disconnect when you respond personally to stuff that's not really intended to be personal? And I kind of just figured like, I probably, maybe I don't have to put up with this. So just when that happened and uh, everyone was giving me so much like, crap online and just went, no, this is not worth it anymore. Right. So I just tweeted, kind of jokingly, like, who wants to buy the company? Right. And a couple of days later, Carl, the CEO, uh, came by and said, we got a bunch of offers, like, were you serious? Yeah. And I thought about it for a while and I said, yeah, maybe it's time. How do you run your uh, Minecraft company? Have you sold out to the evil corporations yet? Mm, no, not yet. We hope not to. But how long do you think you'll be able to do that before you kind of get absorbed by the Borg? <laughs> <laughs> I think that depends on how long we can kind of keep the fun mood going that we have. It was very stressful and it really got to me. I didn't want to work on the project anymore because right. I wanted to just write prototypes or new games and stuff. That's right. the stuff I actually get happy from doing. And I felt like still like I needed to be responsible for it because I was still like the main owner of the company and it was me who developed the game and people were like looking up to me. And for me it was very important to make sure that it was like a clean break. Like it wasn't like trying to like get some investor in, try to grow the company, do like a big exit. Mm -hmm. It was more about getting it quick and easy and just get it done with. Right. So why Microsoft? They were the fastest and they made the most realistic offer. And you had a prior working relationship? Yeah, right? exactly. Because right. we had an Xbox version going. So going back to this idea of, of you as a symbol, does this mean you're going to disassociate with Notch? I know that's a very popular online personality that you have, but do you separate yourself from that in any way? Well, that's hard to do because yeah. it's kind of like uh, that's kind of like an identity that I use myself. Right. That's the difference between like me hanging out with friends and me like as a more public version, like mm -hmm. online or whatever. So I don't think that's going to be uh, a difference. And it seems like because uh, when I first uh, when we announced this and when we were, we were going to announce it, there was like I was completely certain I was going to have to like shut down my Twitter because I thought people would be so upset. Right. So I was kind of a little bit ready to give up on that personality. But it turns out people weren't that bad about it or maybe it just the relief, relief for me of having like actually sold made it easier to deal with so I didn't have to do that break. And so these days the commenters that do troll you it seems like you you hit back at them now. Sometimes, sometimes. Yeah. Usually I use the mute button uh, which is really efficient because they don't even know that we're blocked it's just right. mute but sometimes I will reply because it doesn't really get to me as bad, bad as it used to. Right. We're here at Rubber Brain. I know you, it's a temporary office and you're moving in a month, but what are you and Jacob doing here? It's honestly playing games mostly. <laughs> Rubber Brain is more to have some place to go to, to have like a day-to-day -day kind of office to go to and feel like you have some kind of context for your day-to-day -day life. I have been working on like you know, prototypes and trying to learn new languages, but it's not really the intent that I'm going to finish a game. Okay. Maybe I will at some point and then it's good to have like a company set up for it. And it's, it's fun to have like the idea when you're working and stuff, like it's supposed to become something, right. but not feel like the pressure, like it has to. So you could possibly never release a game again. Yeah, and right. I would be fine with that. It was a long time when I was freaking out, like how do I follow up on Minecraft? Yeah. It was really hard to deal with, like, because uh, it's the entire like big like cultural phenomenon. You can't manufacture that. Maybe now that I've analyzed it, I understand some of why Minecraft worked, right. but that only means I know how Minecraft worked back in the time when the context was made in. Right. That doesn't mean I know how to do it again. I mean, I've been playing games forever and I've been programming since I was eight, so obviously I have some kind of experience in it. And I kind of, I can understand kind of what's fun gameplay, but I didn't mean to make Minecraft a big success. To, to claim that I know the secret sauce would be kind of false. Was it a formula? No, I, I wasn't following a formula. I was trying to make a game. Nowadays, it seems like you're traveling a lot, maybe throwing some parties. I know you were throwing the parties 
uh, even before the sale. But is that something you're going to continue doing? I'm making up for lost time when I was at home just programming yeah. throughout my 20s uh, and before that. And now I realize that oh, it's fun to go party. It's not a sane way to spend money, but it's fun. I figured like when I was young, we didn't have a lot of money at all. Mm -hmm. If I ever get rich, I'm not going to be one of those boring rich people who doesn't spend money. Right. I'm to try to compensate by giving to charity as well, so I feel better about myself. But <laughs> that feels like cheating, kind of. <laughs> we'll see what I do with charity. I still haven't figured it out. Right now, I'm just, you know, buying houses in LA and partying. And how's the house going? Uh, it's going great. I've been there once for a couple of weeks. Yeah. But it's just really nice. I was a little bit scared it wouldn't feel like a home at first, but it did. It's a nice place to go on vacation, though. The weather is kind of better than Sweden. <laughs>